This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. And today I wanted to talk about some amazing news for Bitcoin mining. We're going to be talking about the launch of a new mining pool called Ocean. But a little background before that, you first have the actual Bitcoin mining machines, the mining rigs, which are called ASICs. And they look like this. They're very small computers that do only one thing, which is do the SHA-256 hash and run this again and again at very high speeds and very efficiently. So these are the Bitcoin mining rigs. And then you have Bitcoin mining pools. And a Bitcoin mining pool is really just a node service in cyberspace. It's not a physical location. And you can point your ASICs mining power, its hash rate, towards that node service. And then every participant in a given Bitcoin mining pool gets paid out proportionally according to how much hash rate they're contributing to the pool, minus a small fee for the pool operator. Mining pools make a lot of sense since they help to smooth out Bitcoin mining rewards that come in chunks. Otherwise, you might be mining and mining with your machine. You may be burning electricity for six months or 12 months or 24 months, and then you finally win a block. So this helps to smooth out the rewards in, in part so that Bitcoin miners can pay their fiat bills, which is mostly electricity. Now, usually mining pools compile the Bitcoin transactions that will be included in the next block if the mining pool wins that block. And a purely profit-minded Bitcoin mining pool will always include those transactions that are paying the highest fees. It makes this it makes the most sense if you have limited block space. You want to fill it with transactions that are paying the highest fees rather than the lowest fees. So this is what makes the Bitcoin transaction fee market so robust and free. But the problem is sometimes regulatory and political pressures emerge. And we're going to talk about that in a second. But if you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to hit that subscribe button. That really helps this channel's reach. Hit the like button, leave a comment, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a few friends. So mining pools normally op operate in an economically profit-minded, motivated way, but sometimes regulatory and political pressures emerge. It came out over the last week that F2 pool was apparently filtering out transactions that the U.S. Treasury, that OFAC, does not like. And this was quite disturbing. It was quite weird, especially because F2 pool is a Chinese mining pool. So it's unclear why they would be subscribing to censoring transactions, not including them in a block at the behest of Washington, D.C. But whatever happened, people were monitoring this. The report came out and then people got very upset. Bitcoin miners got upset that the pool was doing this. And so they began to switch away from the pool. And this is how the, the game theory works. As a result, F2 pool said they're now no longer filtering out, filtering out OFAC non-compliant transactions. And this is how the game theory works. If you own a mining rig and you're pointing your mining rig to a mining pool that starts to misbehave in this way and basically attack the network by censoring transactions, what you can do is you can just simply point your hash rate, point your ASIC to a different mining pool. It just takes a couple of minutes to do and does not involve physically moving your mining rig to a different location. So the switching costs are very low. It's very easy to do. And this is a good thing for competition between mining pools. And under this game theory, as we said, the malicious mining pool will quickly lose participants and lose revenue and lose power in the network because rational actors who are running mining rigs will not want to participate in attacking the very Bitcoin network that their livelihood depends on. If you just bought an ASIC for $3,000, unless you're a government actor, you're not going to want to use that to try to attack the Bitcoin network. And I've made other videos talking about how the government can attack the Bitcoin network uh, using 51% attacks, etc. The summary of that is it's much, much harder than people believe. And it's very easy to thwart, especially with the developments we're going to be talking about in this video. If you want to look at how the, uh, the hash rate is distributed across Bitcoin mining pools globally, we can see here in this pie chart, Foundry USA and Ant Pool, basically the two uh, the two superpowers, the Chinese mining pool, uh, Ant Pool, and then the U.S. mining pool, then all these other pools as well. And again, it's very fluid. I could be sitting in Colorado pointing my mining rig to a mining pool in China. I could point it anywhere in the world, really. And so uh, it's a little it's a little bit unclear. There may be Chinese miners participating in Foundry and U.S. miners participating in Ant Pool and F two. 
pool as well. I talk more about this in this video, Bitcoin controlled by two mining pools. This is a frequent accusation. We saw it a couple of days ago with Charles Hoskinson saying that the US can just subpoena a couple of mining pools and launch a 51% attack, which is absolutely ridiculous. And Charles Hoskinson knows that it is. So that's the background on Bitcoin mining rigs on ASICs and a short version of how Bitcoin mining pools work. But the real news today that I wanted to share with you is the launch of Ocean. This is a new Bitcoin mining pool that is based, it's basically a reboot of an old mining pool that was being run by Luke Dasher and now has received funding from Jack Dorsey, $6.2 million worth of funding to reboot this special type of mining pool. And uh, so the name is Ocean and it has some interesting characteristics. It's non-custodial. In other words, the mining pool never holds the Bitcoin payout and so avoids custody issues, all the regulatory issues surrounding money transmitter licenses, MTLs, etc. And so if you're a participant in this pool and an individual miner, you'll get paid out directly by the Bitcoin network, actually in the Coinbase transaction, if you know what that is, from the block reward, 6.25 Bitcoin plus transaction fees. And again, in April or May of next year, that having uh, at the having that mining reward of uh, the uh, block subsidy of 6.25 will be halved to, to 3.125 plus transaction fees. So the ocean pool is non-custodial. It's transparent, all the operations and payouts and who's, which uh, rig is doing the mining, uh, et cetera, are all verifiable and auditable. It's also permissionless. You don't need permission to join and it's non-KYC. So you don't have to provide personal details, personal information like your passport or driver's license or, or social security number to join. So this is wonderful news as well. And it means that it will attract it will attract participants from all around the world and all different regulatory regimes. In another plus for smaller miners, the uh, Ocean Pool is planning on adding Lightning Network payouts of these rewards to miners soon. So this can be great if you're a small miner and earning very small award rewards, which would otherwise be overwhelmed by transaction fees on the base layer. You'll be able to receive those over Lightning and you'll gain the anonymity that comes with that as well. And also this will be great news for the Lightning Network and will increase liquidity as these payments flow through it. Ocean, it looks like is gonna be charging a 0% fee for the mining pool for its first two months of operation in a bid to get lots of uh, mining rigs and individual miners to switch over to their pool. It's kind of cool actually, you can see Ocean's hash rate already using this dashboard, which I'll link to in the description notes below. The, uh, when it says the number of blocks found, I believe this is in, this includes the uh, Eligius pool, the previous, the uh, the predecessor to this pool, uh, and that was being run by Luke Dasher from something like <clears throat> 2012 to 2017. Uh, but we can see the current hash rate, which is 130 PETA hashes per second, which is quite extraordinary when you think about it, because if you look at a failed fork of Bitcoin, like Bitcoin SV, Bitcoin quote unquote Satoshi's vision, which is a joke, it has a hash rate of only 562 PETA hashes. And so it looks like Ocean, after having been around for just a couple of days, is already challenging and would be able to, uh, at this rate in just a few days, would be able to launch a 51% attack on BSV, on Bitcoin SV. And this is one reason you don't want to hold these failed forks that have much lower lower hash rates than real Bitcoin, which is BTC. If we look at this, we can see that the hash rate is 129, 130 PETA hashes per second. And it also, the pool has 163 participants already. So that's very exciting as well. They share their block template. So you can see blocks being formed as they're preparing to try to win the next block. And you can mouse over any of these and see the actual, uh, the amount of uh, the Bitcoin transaction fees that are being included, the size of the transaction, etc. That is uh, pretty cool. In conclusion, Bitcoin just keeps winning and winning and winning. The new tools, the new companies that have been built and continue to be built during the bear market are incredible. And so while altcoiners have been out there gambling and getting arrested like BitBoy, Bitcoin builders and serious people who are really worried about the future of human civilization and are working on important problems, they've been building on top of the strongest computer network in the history of the world. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.